And we're joined by Gord Lovegrove, who I will introduce as UBC Professor Gord Lovegrove. In, in this, for this topic, that's the right introduction, is it not? Thank you very much. I'm speaking in my personal, professional, and expert opinion, Kent. Not to be confused as speaking as the elected city councillor that you are. Which I'm also speaking on behalf of myself as one member of city council, not on behalf of all of city council, to be clear. Thank right. you for that. Thank you. It, it's clear, but yet I'm somehow confused. So, <laughs> on to the, the subject of what I like to call the love train that you talked about when you first ran for council. You've brought it up a few times since. Now you have um, a published uh, piece of work to, okay, explain. Two independent peer-reviewed published papers in Sustainability Journal. One focused on can this thing actually run in the valley? Is it technically feasible? Yes. And the second on the economic feasibility, the amazing opportunities that this would create if we got it for our valley. On the economic feasibility part of it. Whenever this has been raised before, I see the eyes rolling and people say, oh, there's Love Grove with this pet project. We don't have the population to support this. It's a pipe dream and they laugh it off. Yeah, no, actually, uh, all of these things are valid concerns. Can we afford it? Do we have the population? Do we have the density? Well, 40 years, in Germ 40 years ago in Germany, when they launched essentially the same service, they had the exact same concerns. They didn't have the density, and yet their population and density was what we have in our valley today. Rural German cities in rural valleys, low density. We're not talking SkyTrain. We're not talking $250 million per kilometer. We're probably talking 5 million or less per kilometer to install rails and over 30 years operate this thing. So it's, it's affordable because it's less than half the cost of widening highways, right? We, we've been told by the Ministry of Transportation, widening highways is not our future solution. They're actually calling for improved transit. Now that was the central Okanagan Valley. So really what we need to do is expand our focus. It's not just about central Okanagan. It's not just about the city of Kelowna. It's about all the valley, connecting tourists from Osoyoos up to Kamloops. At Osoyoos, remember, we've got a rail stub that connects to the North American Rail Network. We've got a lot of folks that want to travel by train and tour our beautiful valley, like the wine train in Napa Valley, right? Kamloops, that's our Canadian rail hub for the Rocky Mountaineer and Via Rail. So why not think about the whole valley? When you take it in that context, the, the opportunities to protect our environment, to reduce climate emissions, social opportunity for all ages, all abilities, safety improvements, reduce congestion, even though people, some, will not get on the train, they'll still benefit by reduced congestion, as well as huge, huge economic opportunities. I take it what makes it more affordable than some uh, other uh, rail models is that you would lay these rails down, right. right, more or less into existing blacktop. Right, this is on the ground. This is not 50 feet in the air like SkyTrain. It's on the ground. It's not in a separated right away like C train or E train. This is a streetcar like you have on Spadina in Toronto rails sunk right into the asphalt so it's not taking away traffic capacity and it's not unsafe to be uh, having cars sharing the road with trains i can imagine collisions it's just as safe as a bus which we have in the hov lanes in Kelowna or anywhere else on the highway between vernon and Kelowna or, or Kelowna and penticton sharing the traffic lanes with cars and trucks and remember you know what, what's the main cause of traffic crashes can't it's, it's not, oh, the vehicle, it's actually 96% of the time it's somebody making a mistake, the driver. So this thing can stop and start just like a bus. In mixed traffic, it's not a big deal. It's not any longer than a Rocky Mountain Double. We have those big freight trucks that come barreling through Highway 97. What we're talking about is something that's not going to compromise capacity, but it's gonna get 150 to 200 people out of their cars. We're gonna have around 13,000 a day using this on day one. And just think about the growth over 30 years. When I look at hydrogen, yeah. you know, the, where are we getting the hydrogen from? And then you've got your different color-coded hydrogens. And some of it is, you know, uh, it might be zero emission in the end, but getting the hydrogen in the first place. Well, hold on, because your own news report two days ago announced 
government funding for a green or turquoise zero emission hydrogen production facility right. in BC. So it's okay. it's it's all so scaling it's, up. It's all so you coming think together. the hydrogen could be there in, in time that for something is like this. Absolutely a secret sauce to this because once you get on board or trackside hydrogen fueling stations, you get rid of the overhead wires or the third rail that makes it risky and cost prohibitive. Now you've further made it affordable. And that's the key here. Our research is exposed, not just the old 40 year old technology, it's now combining with new technology that's green, zero emission, affordable, universally accessible. These things are low floor, all ages are ability. So people will right. be able to age in place. And if they can't drive or can't afford to drive or they're too young or too okay. old. Here's this what is, I like about it. Now you've got um, these peer reviewed uh, papers published. Yes, yes. So now, uh, is it feasible? Let's, uh, if someone uh, thinks it isn't, they could, um, uh, they could- Read the um, details. <laughs> see it all there. Yeah, right, right there, right, so this, right there. Research paper, but bottom line is, so, this it's, was, it's, so you're saying it's affordable and it's science. Hundred percent. Follow the data. What yeah. about a smaller scale down one that would just be uh, for the central Okanagan, maybe from West Kelowna out uh, to the airport? Okay, could you that, start with something like that? That's that's one where you know where I've talked to folks in West Kelowna, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to name names, but there's absolutely interest. That's actually a great first step to do some sort of a demonstration pilot project. Where, where could this thing go? So people could actually get on it, see it, kick its steel tires on steel rails, tires, and, and ride it and understand what we're talking about here. And then you'd have that as a demonstration project that could be expanded and rolled out for the entire valley. I know I've given you a lot of pushback, but I, I'd really like to see this built one day. I know, I, really and would. I, I know you also have a name for it, don't you? The Love Train. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that name. So, All right, I'm glad you're coming on board with my name, <laughs> The Love Train. All right, thanks, All right, th Appreciate this. Thank you for watching Kelowna Now.